Wayne schools. Is everybody here a senior? Okay. Have, have any of you attempted to fill out your FAFs, the free application for federal student aid? Okay. If you need help, I live in Lawrenceville. I'm one of nine across the state of Georgia. We'll also have FAFSA completion events. It, it will include you and your parents. It's based on 2020 income. If you were back in 2020, it's going to include your income. Family size, age of the parents, and how many are going to college. Um, the best thing you can do right now is how many of you got an account with GA Futures? Okay, if you don't, go to gafutures.org, create an account. That's how you apply for Hope Grant, Hope Scholarship, Zell Miller Scholarship, Zell Miller Grant. How many of y'all looking to go to school in state? How many of you just don't know? Well, let me give you some good news. Hope Scholarship will cover 60 to 80% of your tuition. Zell Miller will cover full tuition. State technical colleges, you have Hope Grant. There's no GPA or SAT requirement. You just apply. It will cover 70 to 75% of your tuition. Our all certificate and diploma programs. Also, if you're passionate about what you do, you maintain a 3.5 GPA, guess what happens? Hope Grant is going to be replaced by Zell Miller Grant. Every semester you maintain 3.5, you'll cover full tuition. Think about it. Full tuition. You're not paying for room and board. It's a commuter school. And what if you get federal aid on top of that? Federal aid, like the Pell Grant? What do you do with that money? Do you have to give it back? No. It goes to no problem. Or it's, or it's deposited into your checking account. You may be making money going to school. I believe you can get up to $6,600 based on filling out the facts. This is a grant, it's not a loan. Use it for apartment rent, use it for expenses. But it's, uh, that's why you fill out the free application for federal student aid. See, the key is you keep your costs low. If, if Zell Miller Grant will cover your full cost each semester, I've got some better news. On top of that, if you go into one to 17 in-demand fields with 300 certificate and diploma programs, what they call the Hope Career Grant, this is on top of Hope Grant and Zell Miller Grant. They'll give you money for going into that. There's 17 areas with 300 uh, directions to go in. One of the top ones. What, what's going on in the state of Georgia? The Walking Dead, movies are being made. Behind every movie prop, there's a carpenter. Behind every actor or actress, there's a makeup artist. There's, uh, there's uh, somebody that does hair. There's, there's electricians. There are jobs out there. In Covington, they got a movie studio. In Fayetteville, Georgia, they have Pineman movie studios. Down in South Metro Atlanta, they have one. So that, uh, there are jobs being created. They have the movie uh, set design through Gwinnett Tech. And you can get uh, you can get the whole career grant if you go into that. That's just one. But the main thing is, is it could be that you don't owe anything. You don't have to take out any loans. And if you still want to go to college, not only do you have a trade to fall back on, almost 30 college credit hours of core classes will transfer to college. Technical credit will transfer to state college credit. So Gwinnett Tech, the, the Georgia Gwinnett College, Athens Tech, UGA, or either way. So you've used the Hope Grant to pay for almost a year's worth of college, core classes, if it's 1101 or higher. And you've got more than a trade, you've got to live in the fall back. So, there are ways, and if you don't get Hope Scholarship, let's say you have to have a B average, 9th through 12th grade, in core classes, four rigor classes, and it could be dual enrollment, it could be math, science, language two or higher. Uh, if you have that, Hope Scholarship will pay 60 to 80% of your tuition at all state schools. Zell Miller, 3.7 GPA, 1200 on the SAT, or 26 on the ACT, that will pay full tuition at all state schools. If you don't get hope coming out of high school, guess what? Maintain a B average at the end of your 30 college credit hours, a year's worth of college, you get it for your sophomore year. There's hope after high school. So what I'm telling you is you've got options out there. So if you didn't think you could get into school, you can. And I'm telling you again, if you, whether it's still, you know, there's, there's many ways to start as long as you finish. So if you go through the technical college route, if you go through the, just straight out of college, if you work a while, 
from the time you graduate high school, you've got 10 years to take advantage of the Hope Scholarship and Zelma Miller Scholarship Program. Uh, otherwise, it expires. So you got 10 years. Uh, how many of y'all work at part time? Who you work for? Hobby Lobby. Who? Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. How about you? Starbucks. Starbucks. Anybody else? Work part time? Who? Where? Capital Vacation. Capital Vacation. Starbucks. Hobby Lobby. Two of these are national chains. Let me tell you what I found out. We have a quick trip and racetrack on every corner of Gwinnett County, don't we? Quick trip, 20, 25 hours a week, maintain a certain GPA, they'll give you $2,000 towards your education per semester on top of your pay. I said, if that's the case, what will racetrack give you? Racetrack said after 500 hours of employment, they provide Burger King, $1,000 per semester. What's going on? More companies are doing what Chick-fil-A's been doing for years. Look around, get Dunkin' Donuts. They, not only are they trying to hire you, they're trying to keep you. I don't mean you're obligated to work there the rest of your life, but look at that as an incentive. So there, there is, there's opportunities to pay for your education out there where you don't have to go into debt. Let loans be the bottom line. See, this is not a, this is not a essay contest when you qualify for Hope Scholarship. It is guaranteed. That's a good thing about it. It's not like applying for a scholarship, you have to write an essay. Speaking of which, contests, are any of y'all going to the a prom, a formal dance? If you are, consider this, and don't run me out. Make that prom dress out of duct tape. Get your date to make your suit out of duct tape. So, submit a picture to the duct tape brand company during before after the prom. Y'all may win $5,000 a piece. It's a contest. They'll vote the top 11. A couple won in Cartersville. He went to Emory, got Zell Miller, got $5,000. His date went to Chattanooga Tech, got the whole grant. She got $5,000 on top of that. I know it's crazy, but there's money out there. I look across right now and I see money. Uh, so uh, we, we've got the Coca-Cola Minority Scholarship. We have Boy Settler, which if, if you're Hispanic descent, there's a scholarship. And you're the Hispanic Scholarship Fund. That's a scholarship opportunity. Anybody here, five, any females five foot 10? And it's not to embarrass anybody. Anybody tall? How about five foot nine? If you are TCI, Tall Club International, that's $1,000. Male six foot two, TCI, Tall Club International. Four foot 10 or four foot 11, close to dwarfism. LPA.com, littlepeopleofamerica.com, $250 to $750. Anybody here left handed? That's a scholarship. Anybody got asthma? Check through, use inhaler. Check through the Asthma Foundation. That's a scholarship. See, more scholarships you get has no impact on the Hope Scholarship. That's just money on top of money. So, what I'm telling you is, there's opportunity out there, whether it's through work, apply for local based scholarships also. You'll be surprised how much money is being left on the table that students do not apply for. Archer High School has a graduation class of 600. There are what they call two $1,000 PTA or PTSA scholarships if your parents belong to the PTA. And Archer, out of a graduation class of 600, only four seniors apply. That means two seniors woke up. They walked away with a thousand dollar scholarship apiece. They apply. I told that story at Norcross High School. The counselor said only seven applied here. So what's going on? Not everybody's applying. So check where you work. You know who knows Hobby Lobby, Starbucks. I know Starbucks has one with uh, Arizona State University. Even Target's. They're offering full time and part time employees full tuition. So there's different ways to pay for your education. Uh, if you have a chance of college recruiters to come here and visit, talk to them. If you need help filling out your FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, it will involve your parents. They're talking 2020 income tax. If you file taxes in 2020, uh, we have locations throughout Gwinnett County. You can come out and we'll sit down and help you fill it out for free if you need questions. Uh, I can be located on the website gateachers.org with a calendar. And on that calendar, it'll say where I'm at at the time. We bring in volunteers from financial aid offices from Georgia Gwinnett College, University of North Georgia, University of Georgia. They're there to come out to help you. This coming Saturday from 10 to 12, I'll be at Shiloh High School. And we'll be helping students fill out their FAFSA. If you need help, come on out. Uh, I'll be glad to share it and give you more information also on that. 
Would y'all like my contact information? I'll do okay. Feel free to share it with them. I'll be glad to sit. If you have a situation where you, you can't share, you don't want to share that, I'll be glad to meet with y'all one to one, like on a Zoom. Uh, everybody's situation is different. Who, whose parents fill out the fast? Natural parents, step parents. So suppose parents are divorced. I live with mama, but daddy claims me on my taxes. Whose parent do I use? It is the mama. It's the parent who provides the most physical support. It's not the one who claims you on your taxes. What if mama remarries? You include stepdad in that immediate household. That's how they, they do. Well, what if I don't like my parents? Can I use my grandparents' tax information? They have to adopt you. You cannot use anybody outside of your parents unless they have adopted you. How old do you have to be when you don't need your parents' tax information anymore? I'm, 20, I'm 19, 20 years old, support myself. You have to be 24. But there are some exceptions. If you can answer these questions on the FAFSA, you're considered independent. Will you just be based on your income? Are you married? Are you homeless? And homeless don't necessarily mean living in a homeless shelter. It could be your house burnt down, this place, you're living uh, couch to couch. Um, are you as happy your income going to a, a, another family member that you're supporting? Uh, were you a ward of the court at one time? Even if you're adopted. These are considered independent before age 24, but if you answer yes to that on the FAFSA, make sure that you provide documentation through the courthouse, because these financial aid officers are going to ask that. That is key. So there are ways to work around. What if you were dumped off at your grandmother's doorstep and she raised you? There was no documentation signed for legal guardianship, you can't, so you can't be considered independent. What do you do? You talk to the financial aid office. Reach out to your guidance counselor, a social worker, people that know you. They'll ask for a letter of support stating that. What will happen? They have the authority to, uh, to adjust you as independent. Unusual circumstances that you cannot put on the financial aid, medical bills, change of marital status, you're on your own, talk to the financial aid office. It's not all in black and white. They have the authority. I'll give you an example. 2004, I inherited three kids, two dogs, three cats, and a first grade teacher. I got married. Two students are in college. The third child has cerebral palsy, bound by wheelchair, 12 years old. We spent $150 on river baby food. That adds up every time we go to Walmart. I can't report that on the FAFSA. The adult diaper company, $80 for a 12 year old. So what do we do? We talk to the financial aid office. When my son attends, they said, show us proof. We can't take your word. We had to show a month's worth of receipts of Walmart and the diaper company. What happened? We got $500 on the Pell Grant from my oldest son and daughter. We provided hardship. We showed proof. They had the authority to adjust our income. We're not rich, we're not poor, we're middle class, but we need every dollar we can get. So regardless of what uh, walk of life you're from, talk to the financial aid office of the school that you're attending. Circumstances happen that you can't explain. Maybe they can help you adjust your financial aid if it doesn't show up on paper. What's the reality? Give you an example. 2020, your parents might have filed married jointly. This year, they're divorced. Now, it's based on a parent income. That may not reflect, but you can still talk to the financial aid office and they'll take that consideration. Uh, I know I've given you a lot of information, but here's what you do. Create you an account with gafutures.org. Go in, you can sign up for hope. one application. It's called GSF Apps. One application takes 20 minutes, submit it, it's good for 10 years. You don't have to apply for Hope Scholarship, Sell Miller, or Hope Grant anymore. Get that out of the way. All you have to do is maintain the grade point average to keep it. Starting October the 1st, you fill out the FAFSA. You do this every year because your circumstances will change. Uh, how many is in your household? Five. Yep. Seven, two parents working on one. Two. Okay, two parents working on five kids. Are you the oldest? You have the other siblings in college? No. Okay, so family of seven, two parent income, one going to college. They'll, that's what the federal government's gonna look at for the 22-23 school year. Did you work in 2020? Okay, did you, did they, did you uh, fill out income tax form? No. Okay, so anyway, they will fill, they will, They'll look at all that. Okay, then, so suppose your mama makes 60,000, daddy makes 60,000. 
120,000 is a lot of money. They'll say, you won't get financial aid. It's not just that. Family size. That's five students. That's five kids. 120,000 is not going to go very far with five kids. Uh, your mother's 65. She had you late in life. Age of the parents. She's going to be Social Security. Just an example. Her income's going to drop. Age of the parents. you got you got two more sisters that are going to go to school out of state. How many is enrolled in college? The out of state tuition is expensive. So, how many, so they, they look at all that to come up with what they call the expected family contribution. How much mom and dad can contribute toward your education, which determines if you get the Pell Grant, federal money. If you get the Pell Grant, you may qualify for other federal aid. It'll ask you on the FAFSA, do you want to be considered for work study, a job on campus? Say yes. It's not a commitment, you don't have to, but if you get a job on campus and you're paid through federal funding, guess what? That's a job, but it's not reported income because you, you're being paid through federal funds. If you get a job at Chick-fil-A on a college campus or a, a bookstore that has a, it's a different contractor, it will be reported income. But there's, there's all kind of angles that works together. I mean, look around us. Dunkin' Donuts, Burger King, Chick-fil-A. I mean, we, there's an opportunity uh, probably here in the ball. Probably, who knows, maybe Hobby Lobby, Starbucks. Uh, we know Starbucks. but. Keep that in mind. So there's different ways to pay for your education. The bottom line is let loans be the bottom line. I'd rather save that money on a down payment on a house, wouldn't you? Because as your administrators, some of them payment plans are like 20 years. So the best thing you can do is this. Sign up for GA Futures. Apply for a Hope Grant, a Hope Scholarship, a Zell Miller Scholarship. One, either one, one application will do it all. Get it out of the way. Is that state aid? And then, if you need help filling out the FAFSA, I want you to know, within this county, we have an army of volunteers. We come together with FAFSA completion days. I'm your Hope representative. My name is Hal Wilkinson. If you have any questions, either way, I'll be glad to follow up with you. The best thing that came out of this pandemic was Zoom. Meet one to one. If your parents have questions, well, suppose my parents are undocumented, but I was born here in the United States. They don't have a Social Security number. They put in zeros. You can still, what do you say? You can still apply for federal aid and hope scholarship. You just, uh, when it's time for them to put in their social security numbers, they put zeros. This is not nobody reporting. They, the government knows this. Uh, if they're paying taxes, that would be reported also. But uh, again, uh, every situation is different. We'll be glad to work with you. So I wanna know, regardless of what your situation is, we can sit down with you to help you complete the financial aid process. You find this information useful? Did you know the Quick Trip? Did you know this opportunity was around you? Let me tell you how I found out. I went to Quick Trip, ran to a student at UGA. He says 20, 25 hours a week, $2,000 per semester. I said, I don't believe you. Get your manager out here. Manager come out and set me straight. I said, that's the case of what we're extracting. Get me. They told me. All that riding around made me hungry. So I went down to TGI Fridays down from Woodhead Place Mall. The manager there said after 90 days of probation, $500 the first semester, $1,000 the second. So I'm telling you, now I didn't know the Burger King gave 1000 That came from the financial aid office at the University of North Georgia. They are receiving checks because they're trying not only to get help, they're trying to keep the help. So this is a win-win for you. There's never been a better time to find a, a job, especially one that's going to support you to your education incentive also. When you fill out your FAFSA, you will need what they call an FSA ID. This is your electronic signature. One parent will need an FSA ID. Y'all you know, both sit down together and you go through the facts. Okay? If parents have got to have a social security number. If they don't, they don't need they won't create an FSA ID, but there's a there's a signature page that they can print. You can file yours electronically. They can print their page and submit theirs off. As soon as you submit the FAFSA, you get a confirmation email. And it's gonna tell you. If you receive a Pell Grant, if you receive federal aid, before you get an award letter, you can submit up to 10 colleges. You're giving them permission to receive your tax information. They're going to turn around and send you an award letter. That award letter will say, congratulations, you, you're about, you qualify for HOPE, Pell Grants, federal aid, and loans subsidized and unsubsidized, and any, any scholarship they include on that also. You fill it out every year because your situation will change. Today, you're from a family of seven two parent income. Next year, let's say one parent loses their job. That affects it. You fill it out again. Now there's three years, there's two of you in college. 
that affects. So every year, that's why you fill out the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. Now let me warn you, do not pay somebody to help you fill out the FAFSA. One parent does one to hit them up for $500, $500. There's some scam artists out there, be careful. I'm telling you, you have a community of volunteers. I'll be glad if you're looking at Georgia Burnett College, there's a lady named Miss Elizabeth Umberger. She's in the financial aid office. She'll be a great go-to person. Uh, University of Georgia, we have a Miss Mandy Branch. I'm just telling you, there's volunteers that they come out in support of you, whether you decide to go there or not. You need to contact the chemist. The boss that hired me, she works in financial aid. Her name's Sarah Blomkamp. My illustrious title says, I don't know everything, but I know everybody that does. I used to be a college recruiter. So whatever I know, I'll be glad to share with you. I'll be glad to follow up if you ever have any questions. So does anybody have any questions that you think of? Is this information overload? Mm -hmm. I understand. Well, look, I have some brochures. Ms. Hall, I do have a quick question yeah. for you. So what if there's a student that does not have a social security number? What are the options for those students? They need to check with, uh, they check with this, uh, if they have a, any registration card. But well, that depends on the status. If you're not a U.S. citizen, if you're a political asylee, or if you, if you, if you have your green card, there's an alien card, they will be in the process of issuing you a social security card. If not, reach out to me and we can see, we can check on the status. It may be that you can't apply for federal aid, but let's check what your status is. And again, please understand, I'm not out here to report your family's situation. We're here, we, we know these situations. We know this is the most diverse county in the state of Georgia. We're here to help you through that next process. You may be going through the process now of an immigration lawyer to get the green card. That, that's fine, we know that takes time. But uh, with that being said, you know, let me know your situation and it'll stay here. As I hear so many folks' business this time of year, it goes in one end out the other. The important thing is at that time. So I want you to hear this and hear me now. You need your, your confidentiality, your family situation will be protected. Our, our job is basically to get you to that next level in the education. And then we can advise you who to contact. Uh, so two processes are going on. Application process, you're filling out your college application. Number two, you're filling out the FAFS, the free application for federal student A. And you're filling out GSF apps for Hope Scholarship. Um, why? There's two ways to apply for HOPE. Fill out your FAFSA every year or fill out GSF apps. Why do we give you two processes? What if parents haven't filed taxes? Why should you be penalized for not receiving HOPE scholarship to stay there? Fill out GSF apps, submit it, and you won't have to apply anymore because that is state aid. The, FAFSA, the federal government is nice enough to put state aid on the award letter. So, uh, when you leave from here, does that man kid me? Burger King will give me a thousand dollars. Talk to him. I mean, look around us. We've got help signs everywhere. They're not keeping. I mean, it's hard to keep help. But I've never seen a better time for opportunity. And these companies realize that. Dunkin' Donuts, my all-time favorite. They, they've got scholarships. Uh, Target, like I said, they've up their game. So uh, just realize if you need help, we're here. And we'll sit down with you, and we'll, I'll give you some time. Uh, if you need us to come out with volunteers, maybe we can set it up here as well. If y'all want to get started on it, uh, I'm going over to also to the Phoenix uh, in Lawrenceville. We try. I live in I live in Lawrenceville, so I'm easy to contact, and I'm glad uh, to, to meet with you. And here's our right. question, y'all. Any questions? Okay. Well, I'll stick around if you got any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Thank you so Please much. Sure. Thank you. Everybody smile. I got to put you on my Twitter page. <laughs> How many of you got a Twitter account? I think these are Instagrammers. I got an Instagram account too. Are y'all impressed? <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. He's impressed. So it's H A L J dot Wilkinson. So everybody smile. Don't kill us. Thank you.
daughter went to a shorter college, it's twenty thousand dollars a year in the early two thousand. She was went in on an eighty thousand dollar education. She got hope, but she got two or three scholarships within the community. She says, I says, daughter, you going into the Miss Central Gwinnett Beauty Pageant? She said, why? I said, five hundred dollars. Miss Congeniality, smile. So she smiled. That's five hundred dollars. We didn't pay back. That gave me a week to walk around my chest poked out like I do what I was talking about. Anyway, that's the lesson you have to borrow. So she got a scholarship for being nice. Who knows? Yeah, you get a pop for more than one scholarship. Yeah, here's the difference. Pell Grant, you don't have to pay back. Loans, you have to pay back. Uh, you're given six months from the time you graduate to pay back these loans. They give you four years down the road. Uh, you pay it on a monthly basis. You can borrow from 5500 your freshman year. 65 your sophomore year, 75 your junior senior. Year. So this money is there. But let that be the you know, be careful what you borrow, that's what I'm saying. You may not need to take out those loans if you get a Pell Grant, if you get Hope Scholarship, the Hope Grant. So that's just money on top of your Sir, are you that team? You gotta ask me. Okay, how about five nine? If you're a female five foot ten, you probably this time I'll put you down. This is TCI, Tall Club International, thousand dollars. Being gone. There are, 50, there are 50 chapters across the United States. John Wood and I provide an essay, male six foot two, females five to ten, a thousand dollars. Are you working part time anywhere? No, uh, no. Okay. I was telling that more companies are providing tuitions like Quick Trip, Rest Track, two thousand dollars towards your education first semester. On top of the paycheck, Burger King, a thousand. And you know, Chick fil A's been around forever, and they give, I think, $2,000 more, more companies are just trying to up uh, They're trying to keep this as long as they're But she'll share my contact information with you. Reach out to me. I'll be glad if we need to. If the parents can't get away, we can set up a Zoom meeting. We can actually get started on the graphs of that way. Yes. Good question. You get your award letter. If you look through the, the pay for college, which is your federal aid, it's going to give you a sample of the award letter. You get to choose. You don't have to turn. You don't have to accept Hope Scholarship. You don't have to accept Hope Grant. You don't have to accept these loans. When you get accepted from this college, they're going to send you an award letter. You have to decide, yes, you receive this, this, and this. The good news is, what if you got a $2,000 scholarship from Chick-fil-A? You need that full 5500 of those loans. Not necessarily, you may just need, what, 3500 So you don't have to accept those full loans. You can turn those loans down. That's a good question. See, the main thing is, more alternative funding that you get through scholarships uh, and grants, the less you have to depend on these loans. And that's what we did. On an eighty thousand dollar education, we only took out twenty five thousand dollars in loans for all four years on a private education. We we looked around. I told my daughter, not me, but we will visit your guidance counselor's office. And of course she didn't buy the fact that no, I'm not gonna make my progress out of duct tape. I did the message with a new patch. But that was money we didn't have to pay back. Uh, again, being short, being his family. Uh, the Coca-Cola uh, Founders Scholarship is open to everybody. They have October 31st deadline. Check where your parents work at. You never know what's out there. I'd be interested to know, I know that Starbucks and, and Hobby Lobby, they may have something. Uh, let me ask you this, how many hours a week do you work at Hobby Lobby? How many hours a week do you work at Hobby Lobby? Uh, 25 to 30. How about you at Starbucks? Starbucks, well, I'm in school, Okay. We look at federal aid, we look at state aid, Hope Scholarship, but we don't take into account how much money a student earns during the summertime. Do, do your hours increase during the summertime? So you, your paychecks are different, right? From summertime it isn't for the school year. Think about this, you got fall break, you got Christmas break, yeah, yeah you, you do need a break. But you're, with, at these schools, you, your college schedule is more flexible. You may not be going to the same class every day, you may be going three days a week or two days a week. 
there's an opportunity to work. And, and don't discount that going towards your education policy. And it's amazing how much you can save during the summer. And boy, from what I've seen, what they're starting out to pay some of these folks, $15 an hour. Uh, I came back through South Carolina, and there was these signs up at Waffle Houses. Yet there's profit sharing and things like this, but like $16, $17 an hour. Uh, you know, and th those folks work hard for the money. I, you know, I can eat off the food service industry, but it, it's just, uh, you know, tip night, you know, some of these folks make, I got a niece that works at Chili's. Some weekends she just kills it and, and tips, and it makes a big difference, and she's going to school. So, again, like I said, and I've got a web, I've got a slide and a list of companies I've come across. If y'all like to have that, I'll be glad to share it with you. And things like that. Are you going to the prom? Consider it. Make that tux out of duct tape. Get your date, make your dress out of duct tape. Y'all made about five thousand dollars a piece. Submit a picture to the duct tape brand company. Now, what if you don't win? You're at the prom today and you just made out of duct tape, and I'm sorry. If you do win, okay, here's a backup. They said take a picture during before or after the prom. Buy a regular dress, but submit a picture of that duct tape dress to the duct tape brand company. You may win $5,000. There's a student Marietta that won it also. That's $5,000. What if you get the pale grain? That's money you don't have to pay back either. I mean, every bit helps. There's also a scholarship search on GA futures. Put in a name, put in, put in family, medical history, put in a keyword, they'll give you pages of scholarships. There's also free scholarship sites. Fast web, put in your profile, go marry. I know this. Uh, make sure that you go to a scholarship site that doesn't have a credit card pop up. Do not go to fafsa.org or fafsa.com. They're going to charge you $79.95. Go to fafsa.gov. This is a free application for federal students. Please, if y'all have any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, but I would start, I would create an account on GA Futures. He'll say create an account at the top. And if you go to the Hope and State Aid link on GA Futures, that's where you can apply for Hope Scholarship. I'll walk you through it. It's very simple. It's three clicks, submit it, you're done for state aid. Federal aid takes a little bit longer, but have patience with your parents. Again, I'm telling you, if you need help with it, we have volunteers, we have designation. Uh, this again, this is coming Saturday, 10 to 12 at Shiloh High School. You and your folks want to come out, we'll be there. The University of Georgia, I, I believe myself, I miss uh, Dr. Aisha Stevens, and also uh, hopefully Georgia Burnett College. You and G may be there. Uh, we're here to help you, so keep that in mind.